Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. Today we're going to talk about dressing for success at your next show, so let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is show shoes versus loading shoes. Now, some vendors will actually bring a second pair of shoes that they'll wear just for the loading, unloading, and setup portions of the day. The reason for this is that you might not always know the conditions with which you're going to have to go through in order to load in all of your items. Now there could be gravel, grass, mud, dirt, maybe the weather is bad. You don't really exactly know for sure what kind of situation you'll be dealing with. So um, in order to prevent your shoes that you're going to wear during the show from getting all, you know, full of mud and dirt and all this stuff, you can have like a more rugged pair of shoes on hand just for, you know, those setup portions of the day. Now your show shoes should be both comfortable and clean. Um, you, you know, remember that you're going to be standing for a large portion of the event. And, you know, if you're going to be on your feet all day, of course, you want them to be supportive and comfortable for you. Um, but also just kind of keep in mind the nature of your booth. You know, if you are a booth that features fashion items, maybe you can um, have some sort of incorporation you know, with your shoes, with what your booth is. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. Okay. And to go along with that thought, if you make anything at your booth that can be worn, you should be wearing those items as well. So jewelry, fashion and clothing, hats, scarves, um, t-shirts, whatever can be worn by a person you should also be wearing and uh, basically showing your products off in real time to people, uh, letting people know what it looks like on, on a person and things like that. So um, definitely keep this in mind if you make anything that can be worn. Okay, so this next portion, we're going to have a little bit of fun here. So um, we're going to be talking about the outfit a vendor can wear matching the vibe of their booth and what they sell. Okay. So, um, for this, what I would like you to do is actually just close your eyes for a second and imagine a woodworker. Okay. Imagine a woodworker at a craft fair. What, what do you see them wearing? Um, you know, is it jeans? Is it like a flannel shirt? Uh, maybe like, maybe even like suspenders or an overall, um, you know, now do the same with a food vendor. Okay. And when you think of a food vendor, are they wearing an apron? Something like that. Um, and then what about health and beauty? Do they have bright, vibrant colors that are, you know, full of life and vitality? So when we think about these different types of vendors, okay. Um, a lot of times their booth is representing certain qualities and traits. And you start thinking of like adjectives that go hand in hand with um, these items at a booth. Okay. So we talked about a woodworker, you know, natural, rugged, um, a food vendor, you know, like kind of like a kitchen type of atmosphere where, you know, if they have like an apron, it almost like gives you that like feeling that, you know, you're, it's, it's almost as if you've brought your kitchen to the show. Okay. And then for health and beauty, um, of course, we're thinking about like, you know, zest for life and vitality and, and things like that. So that's where you start to think of like these bright, vibrant colors that are just, you know, full of life. So start to incorporate literally how you dress, um, to represent, and almost extend the theme of your booth to yourself. Um, because this is just going to further drive home that theme that you're going for with your items, you know, so it's not just all about your items on the table or on your racks or whatever. Um, present yourself in the way that you want your theme to be um, taken in by visitors. Okay, and another thing that we should talk about is just being prepared. Okay, so um, these, this especially goes for the vendors who do outdoor shows, but of course you want to bring hat and gloves and any gear that's going to keep you dry. If the elements get kind of dicey, you know, maybe there's a rain or mist or something like that. Um, but you basically just want to have that stuff at least on hand and, you know, prepared to put on if you need it. So, you know, 
I would basically just have some sort of a bag or maybe like a small tote or something with kind of like these like emergency supplies that you can wear to keep yourself comfortable for a day that might be 8, 10, 12 hours long. So uh, just be prepared with those kind of things and think about your climate, think about the time of year that you're attending these shows and what you should be prepared for. Okay, so I know that we already just, you know, talked about aprons a little bit, but I am going to recommend that all vendors have an apron on during the event um, because I would recommend these over a cash box for keeping your cash and change and currency on you. Um, a cash box is something that you are going to have to monitor and safeguard all day long. And by having an apron on, all that stuff is already on you and you're carrying it with you. So um, it's just going to free you up from having to worry about the cash box all day long and you can focus on other things. I do have a link in the description of this video to an apron that I recommend. And it's actually a chef's apron, but it does a really good job for craft fairs as well because it has um, three really large pockets. There's one in the center and then two larger ones down below. And the nice thing about it as well is that it's an over the shoulder type of apron instead of one that's kind of like a halter top style that goes around the neck. Um, those types of aprons, if you're wearing those all day long and you have like, you know, change and maybe a calculator or your phone on you, um, that can kind of like, you know, be a little bit of a strain on your neck and your shoulders and things like that. So this apron is great because it goes over the shoulder and it's just going to be more supportive throughout the day for you, more comfortable. All right, and this particular item isn't exactly clothing or something that you can wear, but I would recommend that you also purchase an anti-fatigue mat to lay down behind your booth. So again, you know, I encourage you to stand as much as you possibly can all day, and this is just going to make that easier and more comfortable for you to do. So this particular anti-fatigue mat is pretty nice because it comes in different shapes, different sizes, a whole bunch of different colors and patterns and things like that, um, but very durable, and it's going to do the trick as far as as absorbing some of that shock throughout the day to keep you comfortable and standing as much as you can. Okay, so that just about does it. So um, what I'd like to ask you guys in this video is uh, kind of a strange question, but you know, whatever, let's do it. Um, what's like the weirdest thing that you've ever seen somebody wear while participating in a craft fair? Um, just you know, let me know in the comments if you've seen something really strange or something that, you know, kind of made you laugh or whatever, or scratch your head. But um, let's have fun with this one. Why not? Thank you so much for watching. This is the eighth episode in the How to Become a Craft Fair Vendor series. If you would like to check out all the other videos in this series to learn how to become a craft fair vendor, please check out the playlist above. And again, thank you all so much for watching.